Yeah, I quite like that. What's up? So today I'm going to share with you a video about tuning toms because I've had a few comments on my YouTube about it. And I'm tuning my toms today. I thought, why not stick the camera on and show you? So, this works with any type of drum, wood drums, acrylic drums, snare drums, metal drums, stainless steel, Ludwig, 26 inch kick drums, I wish I had. Um, so, what we're gonna do, start off with, take your batter head off, obviously. Um, and then we're going to look at the rezzo head. Do yourself a favor, if you've got stock heads on your resonant head, change them, because Drum companies make drums. They don't really make drum heads. They, they know how to make drums. They don't know how to make drum heads. So, change them up. I'm using G1s on the bottom of mine and G2s on the top. G2 being a double ply, G1 being a single ply. It's a little bit more resonant. But, don't fall into the trap of people saying, oh, you can't put a two ply head as a resonant head. If you want a really short decay, put a two ply head as your resonant head. Um, I've had success drum teching. Um, a tip I picked up from Gareth at Highwood Drums is if you've got a floor tom that's a little bit bow forever, stick a G2 on the bottom and it will take a little bit of that bow off it. Um, and I would never use an 18 inch floor tom without a G2 on the bottom for a couple of guys that I tech with because it just 18s are a little bit unruly, so it just takes that edge off. 16 here, I'm fine with. We've got G1 on the bottom. I've put it on already to save some time. You've all heard the simple bit. Tap round the edge of your drum. So I can hear this one's out, so I'm coming up a little bit. I can hear this one's up. Some people will tell you, oh, you have to go like this, um, but, you know, you don't. Right, that sounds fine for me. The main purpose of this video is going to be batter head, so let's stick to the batter head. Um, right, basically you want your resonant head so it doesn't sound awful. If you have it really low, your drum's going to have less rest less sustain if you have it really high your drum's going to have more sustain and a little bit more ring on it i'm fine with that one of the other things which i do um mainly to save myself from going insane is after every go round test the drum to see if it sounds good because it might not sound exactly the same at every single pitched lug but when you pick it up, because drums by nature are inconsistently made, when you pick it up, if it sounds good, just keep it. Don't sit there like pernickety going, oh, but this one's slightly out. Pick it up like I did there with the resonant head. Oh, it sounds good, I'm good to go, let's go. Next, batter head. Check your bearing edges are nice. They are nice on this lovely Crush acrylic drum because they're made from acrylic. If you've got a cheaper kit, or a wooden kit with rubbish bearing edges, a little tip you can do is get a household candle, like, this isn't one, but get a household candle and rub it round the bearing edge quite hard. And what that'll do is get all the wax on to the inconsistencies and then you can kind of smooth it out and it will give you a slightly better bearing edge than what you had before. Um, little tip there. Uh, right, so onto batter head tuning. What we're going to do? See, this is good for me because I'm getting a video out, and I need to do this anyway. Um, so, batter head. I'm going to go two ply. I use a two ply G2 because I find the second ply gives you that smack factor that you need. The smack factor. Um, coated heads also give you the smack factor, but I like a two ply G2, the new Evans level 360, the collar, something different which sounds good. So, checking your bearing heads are good, your resonant heads are good, we're good to go. Stick your head on, surprisingly, stick your head on. I like to put it 
I like to put the logo in between two points so I can reference where I am at every time, but you can do whatever you like. Second, get the hoop. Check, if you've been playing, the, if you've been practicing like you should have, you will have all kinds of funky junk underneath the uh, hoop. So you want to get that out because that's going to compromise the hoop to head seal. So, once we got that on, we're going to go like this. Now, here's the science part. There's no science. It's literally one of those things that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Drum dials, tune bots, all these things. I guess the tune bot is actually quite good because it works on frequencies, but drum dial, if your drum is out, if, say, like... At one lug, one of the plies with your wood is slightly unglued. That lug is never going to sound as good as... Well, it's never going to sound the same pitch with the same tension, so they're not too good. So what we're going to do, just is, no tune bot, no drum dial. All I'm doing here is, you can finger tighten, but I've got quite poorly fingers at the moment because of the harsh winter weather. So what I'm doing is, I'm just loosely tightening all of these lugs until, if you look at that, until it just gets to the washer. There's no tension on it, we're just at the washer. So we're going down. You can finger tighten them, but as I said, chat thumb there. Harsh British winter weather. Right. Now everything is in line. You can see everything is just up to the washer. What we're going to do... Give me a little finger tighten there. Now I'll give it a finger tighten. Everything is finger tight. Make sure when you're tuning finger tight to go around with the same hand. Okay, turn the drum around. Because you will have, I'm sure you've got in drums, you've got a weaker hand and you've got a stronger hand. If you do all this side with your right hand and your right hand stronger, and you do all this side with your left hand, this side's going to be naturally tuned up a little bit higher. Next, hit it. Sounds rubbish. Great, that's what we want. So, the first thing to do, I will go to the right of my Evans logo. I'm going to turn one half turn, but not a full turn, let's pull this thing in case you can't see it, half turn, now I'm going to go the opposite lug, half turn, half turn, half turn, you can see all the wrinkles happening, half turn, half turn, some of them will feel different, forget about it, doesn't matter, don't concentrate on the tension, you're not a drum dial, right, now we're going back round again, half turns, Half turns, half turns, right, we're back, still sounds rubbish, yes, so, at this point, I'm going to defy what most of the things tell you to do, and I'm actually going to look, I can see that this whole area is a bit out, the rest of it looks alright, so I'm just going to, with my eyes, a couple more half turns over this side, even them out, don't just tune one lug up super high. So now I'm sort of at a drum level. What I'm going to do, this is vital to do this, I'm going to take my floor tom legs off. Yeah. I'm going to put it on the ground. Should have mentioned this is what, what I did with the reso head. So you're not getting any of that resonant head. So the drum, we're only getting top head, minimum drum. For a floor tom, and for that metal kind of wacky doo -doo sound, um, what you want to do is get the drum head as loose as you can while still sounding good. Because it's the sound of the loose, flappy head 
that gives you that smack. Same with kick drums. People think that for metal kick drums, you've got to tune the, metro, um, the kick drum up super high to get the click. You don't. You have to tune it super low to get that smack, which the sound, car, sound guy can EQ to sound awful. Sound like some sort of fridge door closing. Right. So, at this point, everything you do is going to sound rubbish because you've only got resonant head and we're tuning, sorry, you've only got batter head, no resonant head, and we're tuning really low. They're inconsistent. I'm gonna have a go and see what it sounds like though, because you might get lucky, it might sound good. This hasn't gone very well at all, because that sounds good. Maybe I'll make it sound worse. See, that was pure blag. So, make sure you check after everything you do, because, that's out. That's out. Right? But it sounds great. So I'd leave it. But, for argument's sake, these guys are still out. Some of them are still out. Let's go. That sounds worse, even though I've done what they should what they tell you to do to make it sound better. So, I know I can't go back to how I was. So, never down tune because it messes everything up. Um, never down tune assuming you'll get back to where you are, but sometimes you can down tune if you. It's just guesswork. There you go, I down tuned. Oh no. Right. A good way to sort of test whether or not it's going to sound like that deep rock metal sound you want is if with just the resonant head you can hear it smacking you can hear that thwack you're going to get that thwack when it's up off the ground yeah i quite like that um with a head like Remo, I would suggest tuning up the drum higher than you want and leaving it for 24 hours because for some reason I find Remo heads need more time to get to what we call seating for the glue around the collar to crack. This is not just me you know, saying, oh, Evans is the best, but I found I didn't have to do it with Evans. They sound pretty good straight away. You saw that. Uh, that was a brand new head on the drum. Boom, done. Um, I mean, that sounds great for me. I'll keep that at that. Um, so, another little tip that I've got is if you want a bit of muffling on there and you want to get some moon gel or something, whatever, um, you could go and spend however much on a tub of moon gel. Or, well, you could go your local pound land pound shop 99p store or if you're american dollar store dollar 99 cent store at any kind of season christmas easter halloween my fave right go in there and look for the things that kids put on windows because it's made of exactly the same stuff as moon gel but this cost me a pound look how many bits of moon gel are in there and I get to use a skeleton's head instead of a little blue square there he is I've cut a bit of his head off but it doesn't matter I'm going to put a little bit of a skeleton's head on there I don't really think I need it but we'll, we'll keep it on legs back on oh yeah always test it once you've mounted the drum back on with whatever suspension system or whatever that you use I found a lot of companies that have the sort of the suspension system that mounts off the tension uh, rods a lot of the times when you stick it was, the drum will sound great on the floor but when you stick it onto the actual drum itself on the drum holder the shake 
will pull on the tension lugs, tension rods, and the drum will dip in pitch. It will go like. Bow. So make sure we test. That has a lot of resonant head in it because we didn't use a G2, we used a G1. I put my hand on the resonant head. You hear how that's gone, right? This is where what I'm saying about a G2 on the bottom would have fixed that. But in its place, we don't have a G2. I'm going to use skeleton torso for this. I find the torso of a skeleton gives you that nice low end rumble as opposed to, say, a funny bone or a kneecap. So that's on the bottom. Hopefully it's going to stay on for the sake of the video. Short, punchy. It's got a lot of sustain still, though. Perfect for me. That's it. That's all there is to it. Leave me some comments saying, hey, you're doing it wrong, doing it wrong. But try and tell me that that, that doesn't sound good. So now I'm going to teach you how to stay in tune even when you're playing. Very, very, very crucial for recording or anything like that, playing live. So what we're going to use is this, the Tuna Fish Lug Lock. And this is the greatest invention for the modern drummer. You know how many times you use those rubbish little square lug locks and you put them on and they don't, they don't work? This, the tail is designed so that when it turns around, it goes against the head and it cannot turn around anymore. Also, uh, there's a pun in the name. It's a fish, tuna fish. Tuna fish is a type of fish. Tuning, you know, great. That's gonna make you play faster, just a pun alone. Um, so, this goes on here like this. I like to use these little elastic bands to, which you can get from the same guys. Lovely guys. Um, put them around there like that because sometimes when I hit if I hit them they'll come off but with this they don't that goes against flush against there that guy is not coming off what I like to do when I'm recording is lug lock the top of every drum sometimes the bottom if you've got a little problem area um, and it stays in tune for entire recording sessions like a week long obviously the drum sometimes dips from playing but you just give it a little tighten but I've found that Particularly if you've maybe just got a two-day recording session, don't have to retune. Absolutely 